Hey you folks, Quilithian here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. And holy cow, do we have a ton of money. That's because I just accepted a variety of contracts that we are going to work on today. First of all, we got some pretty easy ones. Actually, um, I did one right before the video that was simple. It was like, transmit data from space around Kerbin. So I went to a satellite, just asked it for telemetry data. It was worth zero points, and that completed the contract. So that way I can grab some more. We got one here, remote tech, point a dish out from Kerbin. That will be pretty darn easy. It wants an antenna, uh, or a dish pointed to Kerbin, a dish pointed to Minimus. It does want them to be up for two days. Now, we should be able to do that with our current setup, actually, which is kind of handy. And actually, we don't have to even have to switch to our satellite to do that. Um, and yeah, thanks for people who pointed out that the um, tracking station does show you contracts that are available, so you can sort of preview things. Oh, you can see here, I did go and take the, uh, the carrier and put it into a polar orbit as much as I could, um, which probably won't matter. I mean, it doesn't have any dishes, it's just got the omnidirectional antenna. But I figure, what the hell is, may as well do something while it's in orbit, so maybe we'll get a little bit of extra something something. So what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to put uh, ComSat 1 and 3 pointing at the moon, and I'm going to put ComSat 2 and 4 pointing at Minimus. Um, ComSat 1 and, and 3, one of them will always be able to see the moon, no matter what, and vice versa here, so that should ensure that we have a consistent connection, and we can go and click here. So... Comsat 1. So instead of pointing to Ludwig, which is this there as a bit of a helper while we're getting everything set up, we'll always want the active vessel pointer upper <laughs> so that, um, well, actually, again, we only really need to worry about the active vessel thing for a pair of them, really, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, but we're going to do this. We're going to point, uh, you're going to go to, um, there it is. Moon. Good. And Moon. And then here, we're going to go to Minmus and, nope, Active Vessel is what we want, and Minmus. There we go. You can only, uh, you can only change these setups if uh, the satellites do have a connection, otherwise you don't have a signal to actually, you know, change them with. Uh, point dish out from Kerbin, there we go. Everything is green, and at this point, we are performing that shakeout test at this point. Actually, I'm not sure if I had to do both, if it was just one or the other. It might have been one or the other, actually. But we may as well have that kind of configuration. Um, what's interesting about the dishes, if we go ahead and we show these... Yeah, it'd be nice to filter them down a bit more, actually, to only show the ship I have selected. It doesn't do that. Um, these are cones. It's a bit hard to see because it's a bit of a mess. But the dishes have a cone around them to show where um, where they're facing, and they'll get anything within that. Now, okay, their cone are automatically scaled to whatever you're pointing at. Because I'm like, does it really not go any further than that? What if you're on the other side? But if you look at the moon, it sort of stops there too. But it, it shows the angle. It's pointing at the moon, but it'll actually cover anything inside of that block. So as we go to and from the moon, to and from Minmus, we should have a proper amount of coverage. Okay, so that is mission number one. Uh, we'd have to create a network for the moon. Probably we'll take that. It's worth a ton of money. It's funny, in the description it says, like, ah, some people say this is useless, but we say no, or something like that. Um, because, yeah, we may not actually need the... the at the full coverage. It needs 95% coverage of the moon. Right now, we got 75% already. I actually don't know how we have 75% coverage of the moon. Oh, because we have an angle here. The Ludwig B is pointing to the moon, which is interesting. Um, it actually wouldn't take that much to get to 95%, but it does have to be consistently up for seven days, uh, which probably means we'll have to get... Um... Actually, you know what I'm betting? I'm betting two satellites in polar orbit would be sufficient. Because, assuming they're in the, the, you know, directly opposite of each other in polar orbit, they should each cover half the lunar surface, and that should be sufficient to bounce a signal back and complete that quest. Which is mostly just, just doing it for the money. We don't, I don't think we need it, but it's going to be great. Uh, science data from Space Around Minmus, science data from Space Around Moon, kickoff space tourism might be fun, and the manned orbit for 72 hours as well. We could actually probably pair them up. Um, Minmus and Kerbal is... A little bit weird because, like, we need to get science. Um, and one is, like, collect science destination the sun, which I'm a bit confuzzled about, but... Whatever, we'll figure that out as we go. So, um, 
We have to wait here. Let's do the powered landing. It's actually gonna be a really quick little mission, even with building things, when we'll burn off that quest and then we'll be able to maybe accept something else that's gonna combo well with other things that we're doing. So, if I recall correctly, the powered landing thing is quite fun. It's basically the idea of testing landing without a parachute or anything of the source. Um, it doesn't have to be manned either, which is good because we could very easily F this one up. All right, so let us start off with a probodobodai, okay? And I'm gonna make sure to put a reaction wheel underneath this one. Um, I think this one is the same size. We're not gonna need a huge reaction wheel. That is gonna be insufficient. Like, this is gonna be sufficient. Um, that would be overkill is what I meant to say. Uh, we could also go with a bunch of RCS, of course. Um, but I think this will treat us relatively well. We don't need a ton of fuel. Unless we have, the lighter it will be. Um, because all we have to do, we have to get up over 500 meters and then land again. And that should be fine. Um, these are monopropellants. There we go. The Twitch ones are the regular engines. Um, so let's get a quad setup of those. Um, it doesn't really matter, but we will need some landing legs. Unless we can land gently enough. Interesting. That works. Oh, because they dock there. Ah, I see. All right. So these extra hangy bits are just for show. Uh, what is my fuel tank here? What is your landing tolerance? Six meters per second. So as long as we land more gently than that, we don't have to worry about it. Or, I can do the thing I like to do. What, did they change these struts? Crash tolerance, now see? 80 meters per second. So there you go, who needs landing gear? We can just do that. Right? Right. It's a little cheaper, a little more lightweight. Um, yeah, and I think this will work. <clears throat> 22 seconds burn. This, and the thrust weight is insanely high because these things are light. In fact, I think I'm gonna go ahead and derate these down. 42, and it matches everywhere, yeah. Um, even that's probably more than I'm gonna end up needing. There, let's bring it down to about a two thrust to weight ratio. Because I'm just gonna have to burn up uh, or burn upwards fast enough um, to get to uh, 500 meters and then uh, and then drop down and try to land gently on that. And I think that is what we're looking for. No parachutes, no parachutes, nothing from the arrow category, which we don't. In fact, we probably don't even need the reaction wheel. I'm just gonna feel a little bit better um, with that to be able to rotate us rather than using a little bit more engine gimbal to do it, just in case I don't want to be burning this very much, but I need to be able to rotate very well. All right, so we're gonna call this the um, uh, powered landing tester. Like so, we're gonna tell it to, um, to launch. Do I wanna do a simulation first? Sure, let's do a token simulation. Cost me fourteen dollars to test. <laughs> Obviously, we'll have a connection the whole time because we're not going very high. Um, so, flight computer, hello. Um, right. Um, thank you. Close that. All right. So we've got fifteen minutes to do the test. So we want to land. We want to be surface. Nope. 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 Surface normal, but you you fell or no, actually surface radial is what we're looking for. But you fell over right away. How would I tell you? No, don't. I guess I could have just hit really quick. Or you know what? I should have just locked custom. That would have been fine, because that's straight up. It's never gonna be able to do it. Are we like temporarily getting signs from something? Well, it's a good thing I tested first. So yes, what I want to do is hit the custom button and do that. Um, so here you can see our time left over here. So this is not real. So, okay, there's something, something has gone weird here in my setup, because this to me says the stage is locked, and I'm supposed to be able to hit Alt-L to unlock it, but nothing is happening, and I can't hit, oh, now it's launching, okay. Well, look at that, technically we are... Go in and, oh, app is a little higher. We want to bring it up to 500. This is still in test mode. 
there we go so now we're gonna go above 500 and indeed we did bring down our surface speed there we are yeah we're gonna be going sideways here but that's okay Boop. and then we'll fall over but that's fine no, it doesn't have to be a sexy one. And hey, we'll be able to send telemetry from the shore over here. Okay, but again, that is in testing mode. So what we want to do is, I guess I'll hit recover vessel. But what it should do is rewind us. In testing mode, it doesn't let us save this kind of progress. So we're back over here. And can I, from the launch pad, build my powered landing tester? Launch. I think it'll instantly put, it, put me back into testing mode here, which is not what I'm looking for. I wonder if there was a button from the test. Yeah, just just build it. Okay, and then um, go back to the space center. Doesn't matter which button I use. Either way, it'll revert. But now it should be in the build queue. There's probably a slightly more efficient to hit a way to hit that. Uh, build list. There you go. You can see it's going to take about ten days to build that little guy. We should probably spend more of our upgrade points on improving our build rate. There we go. So, five days, which is still a while. Um, and would be bad if I was missing out anything, but let's do it. Hey, we can, uh, there we go. Complete that uh, that quest for the ComSat 1 that finished very well for pointing the dish. So that's good. And actually, um, well, I guess we can let it finish. But some of the quests, I think, only had a few hours left before they expired. So we'll have to see what's in the list now. All right, that's done. Go ahead and roll out. It's going to take uh, eight minutes to do that. So, equatorial orbit. These are good for money, and we can rescue some more people and see if they work. There we go. Science data from space around Kerbin. Well, that's a freebie. Let's take that. We're at nine of nine right now. We do have a lot of money. We could upgrade this for unlimited contracts, which might be a good idea. Um, this is upgraded enough as well, too, so I don't have to worry about that right now. Oh, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to upgrade the, sci or the, um, the astronaut center so I can do EVAs in space and the science center so I can take surface data. Okay, anyway, I have to switch to a satellite because it's space around Kerbin. So all I have to do is switch to the satellite, ask it for telemetry, telemetry data, which won't give me any science points, but still counts as transmitting science. Uh, telemetry report, which is the same as a crew report. This is part of remote tech, though. Um, I think it's remote tech. It could be D-Magic orbital science. Transmit that, and that completes another quest for us. And, oh wait, we completed the dish thing as well. Right, 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 we completed this thing which allowed me to take this one. <clears throat> Alright, give me another cool contract. Please and thank you. We have over 100 signs now, too. Um, I do like the satellite ones, I find them very satisfying to do, but I think they might be a little dull in the, um, in the video. We've got some more ground tests. Mm -hmm. Specific orbit of Duna. How much is that worth? Quite a bit. An orbital survey of Duna. We're going to want to start taking these missions at some point. We are a while away from doing a, a quest to Duna. What I'm actually really looking forward to is the build a base, a permanent base. Because we have all the life support mods in here. So it's going to be less about going to Duna and more about building a permanent base around um, Kerbin or on the surface of the moon, for example. So maybe I won't worry about taking those. It, probably those will become available once I've actually done a landing on those planets. Um, <clears throat> altimetry scan of Kerbin. That might not be a bad idea to do. A little bit of extra science. Give me some information about the ground. <clears throat> a biome scan of Kerbin wouldn't be bad either, which I don't have a mission for right now, but I could still start. Specific inclination, yada, yada, yada. You know what? We'll take one of those. And we'll try to combo it up. Um, but in any case, what will be my next mission? Oh, right. I, well, I'm going to do the Kerbin powered landing. So let's warp to the completion of the vehicle rollout. So it will be on the launch pad. And we'll try to do it a little bit better, a little bit smoother. Good. Launch.
And the other thing I can do is when I'm coming down is I should probably set it to like surface pro uh, retrograde to stop any sideways motion. But we'd be okay one way or another. Okay. Once again, we're going to open the flight computer. This time we're going to lock you to custom. So you're pointing straight up, <clears throat> which is what we're looking for. We're going to go to full throttle, I suppose. And launch. And pull back. <clears throat> Just let the apoapsis climb. And when it's over 500, kill the engine. So we'll drop a bit because we're still in the atmosphere, but there we go. We've still hit over 500, which is nice. Uh, surface retrograde. Good. Whoops, no, just point up at this point. You're all right. Up, 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 up. Down, down, down. Lots of sideways drifts, but that's okay. A nice soft thing. We'll probably topple over. Oh, interesting. How are we still getting surface speed, but we're not actually dropping? Oh, yeah, because it's all, it's all sideways. And stop. Oh, actually, the reaction wheel helped us stay upright there, which was very nice. No science available here, but the powered landing mission has completed. Excellent, and we can recover this vessel. Lots of extra fuel left and all that. There's got to be a... I probably could have done that so much more elegantly. Well, it would have been a lot easier with actual uh, landing gear, for example. And the other thing that would have helped is using the smart-ass controls from MechJeb instead of the, um, the flight computer. Because it's just... Like, the flight computer is just awkward to switch between one mode and the other. Because... Because it's like a menu-driven thing, you hit on one to like switch to like surface mode, and then it's already set to prograde, which is the wrong way, so you got to quickly hit the other one. Meanwhile, I think it's spinning out of control. Although, I do have some better probe cores, and as long as I'm in surface mode, then I could use the buttons down on the actual nav ball. That probably would be the easiest way to do it. Anyway, I got that, and um, that is really expensive. Oh, I can already get the surface samples. Okay, and my astronauts here can place their flags. All right, that's good. I don't have to worry about increasing my contracts. Um, I can have more parts and stuff for the uh, the air thing, which uh, there's a big advantage now because of the con Kerbal construction time to use a reusable space plane is so much better because you only have to worry the turnaround time is just refueling the ship. Um, <clears throat> and then you can have it go right back out again, which is nice. Weight unlimited. Oh, I didn't realize all these things have been upgraded already. And we don't need unlimited parts. Okay, that's not bad. Anyway, we completed another quest. There's something else we're interested in picking up. Manned Kerbin landing. Manned powered landing on Kerbin. So, very similar to what we just did, but it has to be a manned ship, which is a hell of a lot riskier. Alright, let's do it. Let's do it. These are these are important quests that do land do bring you to the idea of a manned landing on um, a foreign planet, right? Anywhere that doesn't have um, an atmosphere, it has to be a powered landing. On Duna, you can use parachutes, great, but nowhere else. So let's go ahead and reset this. <clears throat> I'm tempted to use the inline cockpit. It doesn't have a much higher crash tolerance. Uh, it is a little heavier, but we'll go ahead and just use this. That's going to be hopefully okay. Um, we're going to give you probably a slightly bigger fuel tank. And you know what? I bet you there's still going to be plenty of Delta V in this. <clears throat> um, now, on the moon, we'd really want to have a Terrier under there, but that sucks in the atmosphere. In fact, ah, even this would give us a pretty high thrust of weight. Not a ton of efficiency. You can see here in our atmosphere, our, um, our total Delta V is only 254, which I don't think would quite cut it. Um, the twitches might be fine. They do okay in the atmosphere. The thuds are another possibility. Let's, um, let's assume we're going to do this. There we go. Similar thrust to weight, but much higher delta V. I think this will be sufficient. Certainly hope so. Again, we'll run a simulation. And it'll be that much more important. Um, landing struts. As low as possible. There we go. Actually, no, I guess we don't want it as low as possible, do we? 
because the higher up, the better the center of mass will be here. We don't have to worry about, <clears throat> excuse me, we don't have to worry about uh, having too much clearance. We have lots of clearance here. So is this all I need? I think so. I could throw on the reaction wheel again to help with the landing. This has got a wider base. It should be a little bit more tolerant, though. Still, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it. <clears throat> Advanced inline stabilizer. Although, I just realized the command pod has a fair amount of um, uh, rotational or, or um, of reaction wheels. Oh, it's five, not ten like I thought. Okay, we'll give that a try. Do we still have enough delta V? I think so. This is... No, we don't need that. <clears throat> Let's land without that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, I think this will cut it. Powered landing test two. And we've got ourselves a... It's a scientist? Oh, right, because things have been renamed in this game. I forgot about that. Uh, we're going to use a pilot. <clears throat> Okay. Launch. Simulate vessel. Simulate. And yeah, so the pop-up that comes up here <clears throat> is I could start it to build, but theoretically, we don't even need this to ever come up. It's gotta be an easier way to tune this. Anyway. Um, oh, right, and I don't have those, so, no, well, hopefully it's okay. There we go for launch. Woo, that's going up very quickly. And 500. And it'll drop a bit, but we should actually hit 500 before it goes below. Nice. Okay. All right, bringing down our surface speed. We're going a little sideways, but not much. Drop more, drop more. Should be okay. We're gonna be on a flat spot, which is always nice to see. Don't go upwards. Yay! Okay, that was our test. So, the question is, can we do that well in the real thing, or are we going to actually lose our pilot? Yeah, because we don't have... Oh yeah, we have to wait until the launch pad is reconditioned anyway. And then... Oh, I could have built them simultaneously. It was time warping. Derp. I'm an idiot. I wasted a little bit of time. I mean, not that it actually matters for our particular setup, but they can be reconditioning a launch pad while they're actually building the ship here, too. Uh, build the vessel. Alright, added to build list. Good. Boop. Take a look over here. Oh, is that a... Wait. Is it giving credit for completing the contract? No, it was in it was in the uh, alert list from when I was playing, so it was in the alert list, but it's not actually completed. Okay, good. I was like, we didn't just find a way to cheat or anything, did we? Four days to build that. It is giving us more build experience. Oh, uh, that's the other thing. I was gonna say I've got right. I'm still rushing towards this thing. Did I not unlock that last time? I'm confused. Oh, this one is unlocked. This one will be automatically unlocked once I get all the prereqs. I feel... Oh, something weird just happened. Because I still have all my science. There. Unlock this thing. There we go. Because that's already owned because of last time. I think we're, we're basically caught up now. We do have to wait for the science here... We have to wait for it to, uh, to actually get researched, but in the meantime, um, that's okay. So we won't be able to use those new parts yet. We're getting close to having things make sense. Uh, roll out. And actually, I want to do this 
during the day here. So we're going to warp to the next morning. Oh, they were fighting the two uh, the two auto warps. Yeah, I want to do it in during the day so that we get a shadow. Much much easier to land with a shadow. Uh, you're going to remove that. We're going to add a pilot. Yeah, right. We got our tourists as well. Um, yeah, pilot. Auto hire applicants. It's cool. Yeah, um, apparently one of the uh, the mods that I have as well is what changed the cost of hiring astronauts, which I guess was fine. I don't know. I guess it was weird that the cost of astronauts would go up exponentially. All right. SAS is on. We're going to start with full throttle, which is pretty quick, but that's okay. This is for real. I don't want to lose lamp fare. Go. And throttle back, throttle back. Throttle back and kill it. And yes, we're going to hit over 500. Very good. And then what I'm going to try to do is stop our surface speed from growing too high. Okay, it's coming down now. And so are we. Okay. Down with the speed. Oh, we need to have it go down a little less quickly. Go now, drop it. Got into sort of a hover here. This would actually be a really easy thing to do with KOS, is to build a powered landing script. Boom! And oh, we had science for a second there. Well, there we go. Now we've actually completed the mission. I'm fair. Hope you uh, you found that very exciting. A little powered landing. Recover that vessel. These things are very hard to do, because it's really easy to get a little sideways or, or something. I mean, as it turns out here, just killing rotation was sufficient, but it's a little more complicated than that when you're trying to land on the moon. And that, that might be a really, really good job for KOS. Um, because with... Um, so KOS is a mod that I have that allows you to like program your own components. We have now unlocked the component for it. If we go into here... We'd have to wrap up this video, but let me just, you know, as a teaser for maybe what will happen next time. Actually, shoot, that's how I should have completed the um, the unmanned one. It's just written a script for it and test things out that way. Oh, that's pretty cool. Under command and control, you can see here. So it lets me write code. And there's, I, I don't know, like you could write a, a launch script would actually be pretty easy to do in there. That's one of the things a lot of people do. Um, you know, not maybe as sexy as some of the auto launch things from MechJeb. Um, I mean, you could do it. Certainly, but you can use a very simple script to basically automate your launch to sort of fake, well, not fake, but do a gravity turn in maybe a bit of a rough way, but it will work. But I think the powered landing would be particularly useful to have there. Um, you'd need to set up a PID controller, and it's like powered landing, but also like a hover script effectively. Like you can tell it, you, you could be pretty easy to write a script to hover like 100 feet above the surface, for example. That would be entirely doable. Um, and so a powered landing is very, very similar to that in that you are trying to target sort of a speed of zero as your altitude above the ground is, reaches zero um, in, in a sense. Or you could be doing something like try to hover, you know, five meters above the ground and then we just turn off the engines and it just drops. Something like that could certainly be... Um, a potential, and that would be really nice. It could also deal with uh, killing horizontal movement very well, for example, which is something that's very, very hard to do manually. So that might be a fun thing to explore um, as we work our way up to our first uh, surface landing. Let's oh, let's take a look at the quest before I, the quest, the contracts before I wrap up this video. Loading time between scenes is so long. Okay. Uh, rescue, science data from, okay, well, we'll just take that because it's a freebie. Uh, moon landing, yeah, so we're going to want that, so, um, tell you what, let me take this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I should do, is I should really upgrade this bad boy to unlimited. Yeah, it's not even that expensive. Boom, there. Now I don't have to worry about it. Moon landing. Eh? Still says nine. Oh, right, we have to let it build first. Haha, <laughs> forgot about that. There's a build time for um, your buildings. I think it's under tech. Mission control, right here. 
It's going to take 22 days to upgrade mission control. So we'll do that. Um, so sending data from space, I just switch to the thing. I send myself the telemetry data, easy peasy, get a little bit of extra money. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to take, uh, we're going to take some of those missions. So next time we, uh, I mean, logically speaking, we should do the manned orbit for 72 hours, which is three days, which is the minimal amount of time to send a manned mission around the moon. Of course, we've already done that. Um, but we're going to do this, and this will pro uh, progress us down the contract sort of tech tree. Internally, the contract list has a tech tree that you have to do sort of in order, um, and that will help us move forward in that. So that's probably what I will do, um, which may not be terribly exciting, but if we throw on an extra tourist on there, now we might be looking at a little bit of fun. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time. Bye-bye.